TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like and comment. Subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, don't forget, we do got Twitch, obviously. If you miss the Twitch live and you want to catch one later or you want to be ready for the next one, go to twitch.com and just type in that username down there next to the Twitch symbol. Don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post five days a week. We watching Gangs of London right now and four other shows and whatever we watch on Twitch, we put it on there as well because eventually it leaves from Twitch. Um, and we got merch. Got mine on. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 4, Episode 14. Let's get into it. There's 25 episodes in Season 4. Did not even realize. That's double from last season. Around two-thirds of all new companies fail within the first five years with restaurants and bars having a significantly higher failure rate than other business. In 2015, 50% more restaurants closed down than at the height of the recession in 2010. Yeah, man. Yeah, I see Gordon out there trying to save lives. <laughs> 25 a week. It's 7.30 p.m and High Court Enforcement Agents Delroy Anglin and his son Dale are working late. They're in Hutton, Essex, to collect nearly £3,000 owed by the owner of an Indian takeaway to a supplier. OK, Dale. All right, we've got, we got a Blue Arrow Essex Limited trading as Bengal Spice. We're coming here for the amount currently standing at £2,919.05. OK. The debt started as a county court judgment, but the claimant escalated the case to the High Court to speed up the process. So if they're a meat supplier or whatever, innit? Yeah. Why wouldn't you pay your meat supplier? Pause. Blue Arrow Essex Limited owns the Bengal Spice Takeaway. If its director, Mr. Asif Ryan, can't or won't pay today, Dell and Dale have the right to seize goods from the premises to offset the debt. Am I right? My name's Dale Anglin, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. What is of a High Court writ against Blue Arrow Essex Limited? Blue Arrow Essex Limited? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, uh, Best Fit. What, sorry? Uh, this is uh, um, Best Fit. Best Fit. Even... How long have you been here? Uh, six months? Six, six months. months. Probably more than that, you know. Yeah, obviously, if you're a new company, it's no biggie. I just need to see your lease and business rates. Okay. Uh, I don't know at the moment. You got no paperwork? Uh, I don't know, but... Do you, do you, who's the boss, you? No. Do you want to call the boss? It's not here. Yeah, I know. That's, 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 can you call him? <laughs> As the man denies the takeaway is owned by Blue Arrow Essex Limited, the agents need proof the business is now under new management. While another man comes out of the kitchen, Dale starts looking through the firm's bills and paperwork. Blue Arrow Essex Limited, VAT bill. Well, these are all from December, and they reckon they've been here six months. It's nonsense, isn't it? What, what else is in there? What else we got there? Yes. The bank statements for Blue Arrow. All the bills and documents are addressed to Blue Arrow Essex Limited the company named on the writ. There's no sign of best fit. Dell does a quick check on company's house. No, You're showing us still trading here anyway as Blue Arrow oh, Essex. That's this month's bank statement. Uh, that's the, uh, it's sending us uh, to here constantly. So why are you open? This is sensational lying. This is like, I, I, I have yet to come across a convinc- No, I'm lying. There's been some good liars on here that convinced me, but like recently, like they've been terrible liars. The last couple of episodes. In their bank statements. To the, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. Right, oh, we're wow. here to collect a sum of money which needs to be paid. <clears throat> Until such time as you can prove differently, we suspect that you are Blue Arrow Essex Limited, and we need to you to pay two thousand nine hundred nineteen pounds and five pence. 
Are you coming wrong place or something? No, no man. Man. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. The agents are suspicious that the staff aren't telling them the truth. They need to see some official paperwork to confirm that a new company, Best Fit Essex Limited, now owns the business. So you say you've been here six months. Yeah. So you should be registered for business owner. rates and you should have a lease. The business rate, who don't pay the business rate? Who here? pays it then? Show me the paperwork. Where's the lease then? Show me that. This is not here, but... I want to see a bill from the council regarding your business rates. This is not a blue, a blue arrow. We don't know about the blue arrow. Show me some documentation. When dealing with a debtor that has a few companies, um, a lot of the time they do that to avoid having to pay the debt from a previous limited company that they have. They need to show me that that debt does not belong to that company. Despite the men's protests, Dale and Dell haven't seen any proof that the new company, Best Fit Essex Limited, is now running the takeaway. Right, can we get one of the bosses on the phone? Okay. I can't get it. Huh? You can't get it. You need to make a phone call now. Why can't hey, you? Hey, let's go ahead, Dell and Delroy. Let's get to collecting, because they at this point in time, they probably got some good food in there, but at this point in time, listen, they playing games. Phone the owners. Why can't you phone one of the bosses? You guys don't want to call the boss, so what it means now? Okay. Listen to me, hear me, hear me, hear me. I've listened to you. I've asked you many times no, to call no, no. the boss. Whoa, 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 no, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not the boss, so I don't know why you're talking. Yeah, but, 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 <laughs> you know what? Don't talk to me. Okay. Don't talk to me. Okay. Well, we won't talk to you. That's fine. As the takeaway staff won't call their boss and can't prove the business isn't Blue Arrow Essex Limited, the company named on the writ, Dell and Dale have the right to seize goods to offset the debt. What you need to do, you need to turn off all the gas. We're closing everything. We're going to take it today. No, 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 we can't. You yeah, can't. we can. No, 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 we can't. Why are you talking to me? Eh? No, no, no. I don't know because why you're talking no, no, no. to me. You don't, said don't talk no, to me. No, 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 don't push me. Excuse, okay. I'm not pushing you. No, don't. You, you push me. I'm not pushing no, no, you. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm staying over there while you push me here. I never why? pushed you there. No, no, you walked no. to here. You walked to no, here. No, otherwise I'm going to call police. Call them. Because, call them. Yeah, of course I'm going to call police. Then call them. It's fine. What started as a simple debt recovery has turned into a. A lot of people don't realize that these high court, court enforcement agents, they got this type of power. Now when they in your kitchen telling you to cut off the gas, you looking like like, like this. A volatile situation. Me, oh, you push, you push me from With this. tempers run, right. ever get the three thousand pounds they came for. Okay, don't talk to me. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Are you calling the police? Probably got some good takeaways. High man. court enforcement. Agent we don't need a recap. Used when the agent today, yeah? Tempers. We do not need a recap. Them. There we go. Now Dale and Dell must try and get this case resolved. Where's the lease then? Show me that. This is not here. But the takeaway staff are still not cooperating. Am I looking at? Yeah, what are you looking at? Like this? Why am I looking at? Yeah, you, you look at me. I don't know why. Where are you looking? I looked at? in the kitchen. Huh? No, I no, no, in, you, you I look at me. I looked into the kitchen. No, 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 no. If you're, you, where, listen. What's your problem? I don't know. If you're going to stand at the glass, listen. If you're going to, if you're going to stand at the glass, I thought like you didn't this. want me to talk to you. Don't look at me like this, okay? With such a strong reaction to the agent's presence, Dell and Dale are suspicious that the men are not just employees. They're want... definitely the owners. If I'm an employee somewhere, I'm not fighting like I'm like 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 I'm not fighting like this. This is I, yes, I work here, but I can get another job. <laughs> Just been someone who can prove what's going on here. Why well, can't I make a phone call? You got phones there. Phone call to who? To whoever runs this business. In most cases, when I'm dealing with a debtor that's making excuses that the debtor is away and wherever he may be, but he's not at that company, I form that opinion very quickly that I'm probably speaking with the debtor. Particularly if he knows a lot about the business and what's going on, and he knows a little bit too much than what a normal employee would know. Dell wants to find out who the men really are. He spots a set of car keys. I'm holding the keys. Why are you holding me? Because I wish to hold the keys until we establish what's going on here. So this is your car. Yeah. Where is it registered then? My home address. Which is where? Uh, London E2. 
Dell hopes that establishing the ownership of the car might reveal the man is in fact the director of the company named on the writ, Asif Ryan. Where do you say you live? I live in London East. Same as Mr. A. Ryan, yeah? As if Ryan, what's your name? My what's... name. Yeah, your name. <laughs> My name is Ali. Ali, Ali. You sure? Yeah. You got any ID on you? <laughs> Do you have ID on you? No, you haven't. That's convenient. The Zero RF is where Mr. Asif Ryan lives, and he's the director of the company we're here to find. And you're, you weren't sure of your name for about a good 10 seconds there. I don't know nothing. This company is all. It's your old company, yeah? Uh, no, this, uh, well, uh, this is, is the company. Oh, this is it. We can see. You're the director of the. That boy said. <laughs> of the company, aren't you? Yeah, the jig is of the up. company. You are. Tell the truth. I'm not the owner, man. I'm not the owner. <laughs> then why is your name shown as the director of the company uh, that we're. What do you mean, my name is. Your name's on there? <laughs> no. The man maintains his name is Ali and not the debtor, Asif Ryan. So Dale turns detective. Okay. He goes out to check the man's car. Boy, they exerting every piece of their power, ain't they? And finds the insurance documents. Oh, lovely. Mr. Ali has followed Dale outside. He wanted to say lovely jubbly. Ali. Ali. It's your car, though. And your insurance, yeah? Sorry? So it's not your insurance? The one that says, as if Ryan. No? You're not as if Ryan, then? You are as if Ryan. Yeah, so what? So now we can talk, yeah? Let's go talk, then. You're talking about some, yeah, so what? Bro, you know what's what now. You know what it is. Finally, his deceit is exposed. The man is the debtor, after all. This is as if Ryan, ah. a, his insurance policy from his car. Ah. So as if, two thousand nine hundred nineteen pounds of five p. Can you pay that? As if. I don't know anything. As, as if. The company is closed down. As if. Already. It's not. It's not closed down. It's, 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 it's still active. It's still active. It's, 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 it's shown as, as active on company's house. But as if still claims that the shop belongs to a new company. Best fit. The company is new company. Okay, so the new company bought all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Can I see the receipt and the transaction? Bill of sale. Paper? Show me the bill of sale. That's uh, new people. New, uh, new so you people. don't have you don't have it. What do you mean? You don't, you don't have, have a bill of sale. You don't have a receipt for the new people. But I don't have any money. Company owes the money. Listen. I don't owe the money. Person. But then Dale spots a document addressed to the owner of Best Fit Essex Limited. The new company Asif claims now runs the takeaway. He rings the contact number for the owner named on the document, Mr. Forid Ahmed. Hello? That's you, yeah? Please! The call is answered <laughs> by the other member of staff in the kitchen. So you're the... You're Mr. Ahmed who runs Best Fit Essex Limited, yeah? You're Mr. Ahmed, yeah? What? You're Mr. Ahmed, yeah? Yeah, he was. You're the contact for this? Yes, Please. Right. He just phoned your number. I just rang you. No. I just rang he you. He just phoned you the number. Hold your phone, yeah, but, yeah, but hold your phone out. He just, he just, he just phoned you, idea. isn't it? That's your phone number on there. No, listen, listen. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No idea, I like the way you roll, no, yeah? No idea, you No idea, yeah, yeah. I, I like the way you roll. Just start taking stuff. It's, we're done. Well, we still playing. I think once we've exhausted all of a defendant's lies, and we've totally blown it wide open. I mean, we get into a new point where they realize that we're not here playing games with them. Like, bro is literally in here, this guy. He's in there looking through documents, looking at the document, calling the number, and you pick up your phone when it rings? How? How? How thick are you? Pause. Um, and we're good at what we do. No paperwork to show that Asif has officially transferred his business to his co-worker, Forid. Dale gives him one last chance to pay. Can you make this payment, Asif? £2,919.05. Right, no worries, Asif. He doing all of that 
Like, did they do all of this just to like not to try to to try to avoid paying twenty three hundred dollars or twenty nine hundred dollars? This sounds like a headache. You can just pay the money. We're gonna now remove goods to cover the bill. With Asev's refusal to pay, the agents now have the right to seize the takeaway's assets to cover the debt. But there's a problem. It's now 9.30 p.m. We want to do a remove of all the, the gas fittings. Are we, not going to, are we going to get anybody this time of night? OK, mate, thanks. It's too late to send a vehicle to collect the kitchen equipment. So the agents decide to throw Asif a lifeline. Come here. We're going to give you till 12 o'clock tomorrow. We'll give you till midday. Pay 2,919. No, no, no. 12 o'clock. Yeah, 12 o'clock. Give me at least 5 o'clock. Not 5 o'clock. I'll give you till 2 o'clock. Okay, 3 o'clock, yeah. What's wrong with you? 2.30, find the money, please. All right. Okay? Okay. The deadline is set. Asif now has 17 hours to pay the £3,000 he up. Asif now has 17 hours to get his stuff up out of this building. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't, the agents will be back. What's that on the floor? Is that cat poop? The number of people made homeless after falling into arrears with their rent has increased by nearly 60% over the last five years. 300,000 landlords expressed worries that their tenants won't be able to keep up with rental payments over the next year. The total rent errors, arrears owed by tenants in the private sector last year came to 959 million pounds. Landlords are taking massive ills. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in West London to carry out an eviction. We're going to Shakespeare Road, Acton, London W3. The tenant, Numa Tall, has lived in the house with her young son for just over a year, but she hasn't paid any rent for six months. Well, there's £14,000 plus on the writ. So, I think if that was me, I'd be gone by now. But the agents aren't here to collect the £14,000. Their job is to get Numa out today. 14 bands is a little bit wild. At that point, you're taking the PISS. So running around inside. Good morning. This Numa at all? Yes. Hi there, I'm a high court enforcement agent. Uh, and I have a, a writ to repossess this property. Come in. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's nice and warm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice little heat. This is for you. Yes. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll give you an hour to get your personal effects together. Wow. I wasn't prepared for that. No, no. I ain't even gonna lie. I, I don't want to laugh. I don't mean to smile. But the look of shock, when you owe 14 bands for living somewhere that you have not kept up on the rent for, and when they come to kick you out, and you got this look on your face, it's a little bit funny. I ain't even gonna hold you. Like you knew, you you knew what was happening at this point. I wasn't prepared for that. You owe no, no, no. You owe 14k. Get out. I understand that. <laughs> if I had at least this letter, like, you know, two, three days ago, I could just, because what you're telling me right now, you're just like... They come to tears, man. Put your stuff and go. What you're telling me is just like rush. It's just like... But anyway. this has been going on for months. You haven't paid I the rent. No, but I was waiting for this one, not like that. You see what I mean? I'm no longer surprised the tenants are shocked by the fact that we're on the doorstep there to evict them because of massive rares. They just think it's never going Hold on now, maybe. <laughs> What's that back there? Going to happen. 
I think it's the old doesn't belly matter. The head Let's of the focus. Sun syndrome. They just don't want to know. Paul wants to find out how Numa found herself Ooh, in this was situation. Was that the same person? Victim because of massive rares. Yeah, that's they the just same person. It's never going to they just don't want to know. Paul wants to find out how Numa found herself in this situation. Why have you not? What what happened? Do Why you really want us? Yeah, playing dumb is crazy in this situation. Like you ain't been getting these bills. I know. I know you've been getting this bill. I know you've been getting calls. Fourteen bands. I'm not letting it go. I'm suing you. So I do. Like that. So basically, I opened my company yeah. in 2013. And when I opened my company, I had people working for me. Everything was going smoothly. And then everything changed after some times. So I couldn't take it in because this house is 2,200 per month, okay. which is like, you know, you're paying for somebody mortgage. Yeah. And it's very- Mortgage might be less than that, buddy. That's tough very expensive and it's me and my son we don't really need that you're obviously a really intelligent girl if i was intelligent i wouldn't been here today with you guys i don't know i think you've done quite because well or you would have moved out when you realized you couldn't make the payments i had fifteen thousand pounds worth of rent i mean that's quite clever really will your family look after you no i don't want anyone involved with whatever I'm doing right now. This is my fault, my big mistake, and I need to deal with it. Now, despite the shock of their arrival, Paul a, and Steve must help Numa understand- This is an amazing house. They had a patio, patio furniture, all types of- And that she must leave today. You have to look at it from both sides of the coin, okay? For you, this is not a good day. We are not nice people. The landlord, for them, it is yeah. a good day for them. So it's a balance. I just want them to give me at least a day because all of this. At least a day? They gave you, what, 12 months? Six months? It's mine. And how can I just do that like that? Oh my God, this is something so new for me. And I know this is your job, man. Wow, look at me. <laughs> When you get a, a tenant who like breaks down, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I, I just I watched this yesterday. I looked. I watched this. There's two things in life you should never trust: a man smiling or a woman's cry. It could be both good acting jobs. Man. Down in floods of tears. <clears throat> I think it's that point they actually realize that we're being for this is it um, doesn't matter what I try and do now I've now got to admit to myself that I have the problem and I've got to move forward with it so it's the reality check as Numa has a young son the agents need her to understand what she must do next yeah, emergency the accommodations. Give them that piece of paper, because they won't do anything without that piece of paper. Get yourself sorted. Get the little one. Okay, your... can you give me at least two hours? No, 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 we can't. We have to be gone no, from... No, because I need to... All you need to do is a... What the... I've got my stuff here. One or two bags of clothes. One or two bags of clothes. Identification. That's really all you need. And then you can come back and collect everything else later. Okay? Okay. okay. Back to her fake. Ooh, she, that's her. I'm originally from Mali, West Africa. My father was, you know, a very, very big person in my country. He was a diplomat person. And I was the black sheep of my family. And I'm not proud of it because I decided to have a child without marriage. I'm Muslim, by the way. <laughs> so it very, very. That was my next question. When you say black sheep, did you mean thought? <laughs> Because there's like we need clarification because there's several different lanes of black sheep, and you know what I'm saying? It's giving what you just laid out. Very bad. My bad. I'm just gonna. 
Despite her distress, Numa has finally started to pack. Salute them. I'm just sorry for my little one. He doesn't deserve to. If I could go back in time, I've done it. Let me take my picture. Of course, she's taking a picture. Half since the That's agents crazy. arrived, Numa's time in the house is almost up. Five minutes. Five minutes. <clears throat> too busy, have to go, I'm afraid. But the thought of leaving the house is proving too much. Okay, <laughs> uh, beautiful house. Now I'm leaving. Please take care of my stuff. Ma'am, get out! Now I'm leaving. She wild. Ha! With the locks changed, the eviction is now complete. It will be up to the council to provide Numa and her son with a bed for the night. Paul and Steve have dealt with an emotional eviction. But in Dell and Dale's next case... He's already taken his call. He's transferred this up since then and asked us to enforce it. They meet a debtor who won't face up to the truth. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not oh, whoa, 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 chill, chill. Yeah, I'm it for me. Nearly a third of all workers in the UK are self-employed. But since the beginning of the financial crisis, their average earnings have dropped and the self-employed are nearly 40% more in debt than those in full-time employment. High Court enforcement agents Del Anglin and his son Dale are in Surrey, chasing nearly £4,000 owed by a car dealer to a dissatisfied customer. OK. What have we got, young master? Mr. James Elgar. He owes the amount of £3,822.31. The claimant bought a letter over from Mr. Elgar, but decided to return it. Wanting his money back, he went to court and won. I might as well go and see what's what. Now Mr. Elgar must settle the debt. But if he can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to remove goods and vehicles to offset. I wish they just say t if they can't pay today, we'll take they'll take it away. Like just say it. Like, why wouldn't y'all be saying that? Like that is elite. The amount he owes. Good morning. How you doing? My name's Dale Anglin, High Court Enforcement Agent. Look for Mr. James Elgar. Okay. Is that yourself? No, it's not. Ever heard of him? I have. Yeah. Does he live here? He does. Mr. Elgar is renting a room in a friend's house. Uh, Mr. James Elgar. That's right. High Court Enforcement Agent. Right. I've got a High Court writ against you. We're here for the sum of £3,822.31. No, no, he's having his car back. He's taking his car back. You contact me about that. He's already taken his call and he's already got no, a judgment. his car. Yeah. He's taking his car back. But that means nothing to me because well, I don't he, know he what he this is about. Off, he didn't want it. Right. Um, and then basically, he, he, you know, he obviously done a chemical judgment, and then he said uh, he'd, he'd take his car back, which is what you basically. He, he, you know, means nothing to me because right, I don't he, know he what this is about. Off, really, he didn't want it. Right. Um, and then basically, he, he, you know, he obviously done a chemical judgment, and then he said uh, he'd, he'd take his car back, which is what he was doing. He right. contacted me like literally about three weeks ago. Right. He's transferred this up since then and asked us to enforce it. Mr. Elgar claims that the Land Rover was returned to the claimant after he changed his mind about a refund and that he owes nothing. But the High Court writ says otherwise. Yeah, he gave the devil. Sound like he getting finessed. Should we step outside and do this? This is my mate's house, it's not even mine, so... He said you live here? No, he's in the room. Just crashed at his room, yeah. But obviously I don't like this at my mate's house. Should we step outside and do it? Fortunately not, I've got High Court writ to be here. So what do you want to actually we're do? Here today. Well, we're here to collect £3,822.31. Otherwise, we're going to seize goods to cover the bill. That's what we're here to do. And what are you going to seize? Well, we don't know. It's in the house. Well, we haven't looked for it. But There's we, nothing we, here in my old TV. That's well, it. We don't know that. 
hopefully we can resolve this in the nicest possible way. First, firstly, are you able to... No, not at all. Give me mm. a couple of hours. We'll, 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 count and we'll have to stay here until we've sorted it. You can't sit in this house while I go and sort something out. Yes, house. we can. Sir. Under... We, well, can. we can sit here. We're not going to leave until it's sorted. Mr Elgar is clearly uncomfortable about the agents being in his friend's house, but the writ instructs Dale and Dale to stay until the case is resolved. We need to know who owns everything in here. I he, does. Does. Well, he needs to prove that. Do you want to grab him and let him bring receipts for everything? I think he's got You've got to bring receipts for him? Yeah, well, I need to know. Because because it's ridiculous. It's the way the law works, unfortunately. What do I own in this house? What do you want? I own in this house, TV upstairs. Oh, PlayStation, that's it. Yeah. Anything that's in your room, I guess. That's it, nothing here. OK, but we need to see receipts for everything else in the house. Oh. That's, that is... I would definitely, like... As a person that's letting you rent a room, like, that would piss me off. Like, bro, get out. Uh -huh. You can't, let's go. Uh, that's well, we can, we can. That's, that's not outrageous. You live here. With Mr Elgar saying he can't pay, their next target is his car. Which car you got? I'm in the black right there. That blue one. Okay. Dell immediately sets out to seize Mr. Elgar's car. Its value doesn't come close to clearing the near £4,000 debt. But Dell hopes that the threat of taking it away will prompt payment. That's fine. Well, how much is the car worth, did they say? Can we have a chat to see what goes in? Because this is just his run well, it's easy if you pay it, isn't it, mate? I'm out of work, I've signed on. You're going to have to try and do something. Otherwise, it's going to inconvenience the people here when we start going well, through the room. I'm signing on, I haven't got your money. That's, that's the problem. It seems that Mr Elgar is no longer trading cars, but the debt must be settled today, either in cash or goods. How are you paying rent? You could just come down there and, and, and take my mate's stuff, but it's not even mine. It's not even mine. Oh, no, no, no. We don't know if we're not here to take your mate's stuff. We're here to remove your goods and chattels. Some debtors will, will have a, a, a conflict if, they, if, if they're living somewhere where they're paying rent to their friend, for example. They've got debts. And we're there primarily to remove goods or to collect money. So I'd imagine it's a bit embarrassing for them, for both of them. While the agents wait for Mr Elgar to try and raise some funds, they take a look upstairs for any other assets that might belong to him. A sparse with a small um, notepad type computer, uh, Sony, old Sony telly. I mean, I get it. You just here to live, but godly. And not a house. With no items of broke a snack closet with a, with a bottle of ketchup in it and some pickles? Bro is really living skimp. Galaxy bars, beers, wet wipes, Doritos, ranch, Cool Ranch, Doritos, another flavor. It's down bad. The value in Mr. Elgar's room, pushing for payment, is Dale and Dell's only option. Any draw? Uh, couldn't, couldn't get hold of us, so we've got to go around. We've got to go around to where? So I'm, I'm not going into a city. I'm not doing that to my mate. Leave me sit here for a Why would you be a couple of hours if you're just going to go and ask Because it's, you, you're asking me, it's just, it's not as simple as that, guys, to run in and run out. So I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to watch TV. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to watch TV? It's a stalemate. Dell gives him one last chance. Oh, sat down with him. What are we watching? ...to pay off the debt. Listen, we're here because the High Court of Centers. Your argument with the claimant is your argument with the claimant. You should have dealt with that. Now, we will wait. We'll be patient. We won't remove a thing. We'll wait patiently till you go and do what you need to do and come back. Right, so, I'll go around now. We'll give you a phone number. Have you got a phone? Yeah. Mr Elgar heads off to his mom's to see if she can help. He's walking with purpose over to the end of the road. Ah, I think he's got someone, someone's turned up for him. But just moments after Mr Elgar leaves, Dell gets a call from the office with surprising news. Morning, Dell. Good morning. Good morning. Just to let you know, he's uh, contacted the uh, claimant. Uh, claimant's uh, obviously 
obviously he's referred him back to us. Um, what he does state though, from the, the, the defendant, Mr. Elgar, mm. has got a Nissan Navara out of sale on Horse Trade at the minute. It's two and a half grand's worth. Oh, our lovely cheers. It seems that Mr. Elgar does have some assets, after all. He's still got vehicles up for sale on Auto Trader. Uh, his phone number on it to be contacted as a seller, so he's still selling cars. The car. So he out here capping. I knew it, because how you paying rent? Are up for sale could be seized if he doesn't return with payment. Then Mr. Elgar calls. Hello. Hi, it's James. Hi, James. Right here, so I can't, I can't do what, what can we do then? Well, you need to pay this money. Well, I haven't got it. Okay, no worries. Then further action will continue at further cost to you, James. Minutes later, Mr. Elgar calls back. Hello? Hello, right, can you tell me what's happening now then, please? We're going to remove assets that we think of that are viable to remove, sir. As you were, you're refusing to pay, aren't you? That's what we're talking about. No, I'm not refusing to pay. Right, you need to pay. I'm Land Rover. You, you want to do what, sir? How about if I give you car, which is obviously worth like three grand? Well, you said you'd already given him the car back. No. I thought you gave him the car back already. No. That's what you said when I... It's all been one big lie. He said, said he gave him the car back already. So you tried to take the car and the man money? Like, what are you... What's... That's no, coming. No. Oh. Interesting. It seems that Mr. Elgar didn't return the Land Rover to the claimant after all. Where exactly? This dude is a pitiful. He's a piece of work, man. He's a car. Well, can, I mean, can, can that work or not? Or have you got to take my TV and We'll probably take all of it, to be fair. I don't know what else you've been saying. I've got to work something up with you. No, you're not, James. I don't believe a word you're saying. You've lied to us since we got it. Goodbye. Dale calls the office to check out the Land Rover's value and that of the other car he has listed for sale. Right, the uh, Land Rover Discovery. Uh, can't get a valuation on it. And worst news being the Minivara, that was a Cat D write-off. Um, so there's no value in that boy. No be, value. Cheers, John. I'm in bag. Yeah, I might Let just have to leave. Dale, the High Court Enforcement Agent, this is the house. Yeah. Uh, I'm just calling you via the Auto Trader app regarding the Nissan Navara you're selling. I've sold it. Oh, it's sold, is it? If you've just sold it, you've obviously got the money to contribute towards this bill. No, I haven't done it. Oh, you haven't? Oh, no worries. Can you understand the trust issue we're having with you? Yeah, I can do, mate. I mean, you know, I'm happy to try and get some money together, but I can't get all of it together. Unable to get a value for the Land Rover, and with the Nissan deemed a write-off, neither can be used to offset the near £4,000 debt Mr. Elgar. Should we take the Astra? Do you know I honestly think? I think, um, it's just not worth it. Negotiating a repayment plan is now the agent's only option. So I need a suitable offer but, for you. But what's a suitable offer? Make an offer and we'll tell you if it's suitable, James. You need to cover half of this today, minimum, James, and then we can move forward. No, no, it's not possible. Tell me what you can afford to pay monthly now. His son's still trying. And tell you if I can accept it or not. Uh, $20. 20 pounds, what? 500. 500 a month. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'll call you back shortly. That's the good little mum out okay. right there. So we now know what he's going to offer a month. We can either conclude it on that basis and leave. I see, and see what the offer and oh, oh, wait, what's the alternative? There isn't. Dale calls Some the kind office of to see whether the deal is acceptable to the claimant. He's offering 500 quid a month and we've got no other choice because there's nothing to take. Well, go with what you can, Dale. Yeah. Part. Cheers, John. Dale calls Mr. Elgar. They've accepted your... your monthly arrangement. When will you make the first payment? Can you pay it tomorrow? That's the 26th, yeah. OK. With a payment plan agreed... I hear him. I'm, I think he's just telling them what they want to hear. He's probably been through this before. I don't think he's going to pay. The case is concluded for now. But if Mr Elgar defaults, the agents will be back. Which he will. He, people that default on payments usually don't have hubcaps on their car. So if you're riding around hubcaps, 
help capitalists, your bills are in collections. And we know it. Nobody wins on this situation for me unless he does stick to his arrangement. He hasn't been truthful on anything so far since we've been here, so the likelihood of that is slim. Last year, 40,000 households were evicted from rented accommodation. One in four private renters have been forced to move by a landlord who wanted to increase the rent or to sell up. The number of evictions in England and Wales has increased 53% since 2010. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in Acton, West London, to carry out an eviction. We go right at the lights. Down the A40. Up the A40. The Central Sea and Diggadees area, ain't it? No, down the A40, you're right. The tenants, Lorraine Jones and her partner, Nick, have lived in the flat for almost a year. Their tenancy hasn't been renewed because the landlord has sold the flat. Find the old fellow on the, on the wheels. Notice of eviction was sent by the county court, but the landlord escalated the case to the high court to get the tenants out quickly. Thank you. It's always upstairs, isn't it? Yeah. There you are, sir. It's all yours. Today, the agents are here without warning. If you are in there, we're high court enforcement agents. That sounds vicious. No one appears to be in. Mm, they knocking with a block of wood. You mean business? Door knocker. Wooden door knocker. If you don't open the door, we will have to force entry. But then one of the tenants, Nick, arrives. You know what I mean? Are you from number 58? Uh, yeah. You don't look like Lorraine. Uh, yeah, my partner's on the way back. We're high court enforcement agents. We yeah. Are, we, you, um, you were expecting us, were you? Uh, well, we weren't expect We ain't got no letters saying that you're coming today. No, no, there is no letters. Oh, we, right. We're from the high court. If I can explain the procedure to yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, we give you an hour to get personal belongings together. Yeah, I was down to see my mental health um, GP to, oh, get right. a, to get a note from them to take to the council. I've got ADHD. Have you really? Yeah. Oh. But my tablet's done. It seems to calm me down. Why is that important? ADHD, attention deficit hyper disorder? He said that like he had cancer or something. Like, we don't care. I, that, that's, I'm being, like, being, let's be honest. ADHD is, everybody almost got that. Like, we don't, we don't, we don't. And? So you're okay as long as you keep taking yeah, the yeah. tablet? Nick's circumstances mean that Paul and Steve must handle the situation with care. Definitely. Is that the open door, yeah? Yeah, yeah of, course. of course. Of course. Keep them ferocious dogs away. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's locked in the front room. She's only a little resting. Oh, wow. Steve, baby. Sit. Sit. It's absolutely devastating to have the home and the circumstances. In the comments, they said that he needs to get his hard drives checked. <laughs> He's giving those type of vibes. That's funny that you have known near and dear to be suddenly taken away from you in short order, which of course is what happens when we turn up. Hello, Mum. I'm with the bailiff now. Do you want to speak to him? As Nick calls his mum for help, Lorraine arrives. You all right? Yeah, no cap, I'll be moving smooth in with my mother. Well, no, no. We was told on one day I'm we cool. would get at least two or three days' notice before you, you lot showed up. Who told you that? My letting agent. But can I ask the question? Mm. Are you OK now? You're all right? Not really, no. No, all right then. Were you happy? Been like, sorry, I suffer with anxiety. And I haven't any... been sleeping or anything. No, OK. If you go in there, then make yourself a cup of tea and do whatever, and we'll catch up in a few minutes. All right. Don't, don't upset yourself. Faced with a sensitive situation, Paul and Steve will have to draw on all their professional experience to keep this eviction on track. I don't eat or anything. It's making me really ill.
bro got ADHD and she got anxiety. 2024, that's over more than 75% of the population in the world got that. High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Paul Bowhill were in West London to evict a couple from a flat in Acton that had been sold. If you are in there, we're High Court Enforcement Agents. But it soon became clear the eviction would have to be handled with care. Oh, <laughs> ah. Ooh, somebody in the chat called them Pete and Bass. That's funny. Now that, this is pure comedy today. Y'all y'all on the roll, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I see my mental health um, GP. I got ADHD. Wait, Nick what did he say? I can't see my mental health um, GP. I got ADHD. Oh, he has mental health issues. Oh my God. I, so he, wait, what, wait now, come on now, cause I talked bad. Would have to be handled with care. I can't see my mental health um, GP. I was down to see my mental health GP. I got ADHD. I got ADHD. I, well, I'm lost. ADHD, attention deficit hyper disorder. Maybe there's like levels to it then because I, 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 I might be ignorant when I'm talking about that subject. Nick and his partner, Lorraine, had not been expecting the eviction today. So, yeah, I suffer with anxiety and Is I haven't any... been sleeping or anything. No. Yo, now, yo, Lorraine must <laughs> contact the council to arrange emergency accommodation for the night. Hiya, I've got an arrange emergency accommodation. She's moving crazy. By the bed? Two, for the two liter? Hiya, I've got an appointment for tomorrow. Um, we've actually got the bailiffs here at the moment. They've just shown up. Like My letting agents hasn't given us any warning that they're coming today. I'm just waiting for my partner's mum because she's coming down to help us because of whatever he's got. And Yo, what is happening? Are those handcuffs? Mental health issues. But always one like because we can't be put in a bed and breakfast. That's the only thing. Because I mean, camera zoom out. Let me take a look at what else is going on here. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. They've just turned around and said, "You go to your home yesterday. You've just got to come into the council behind and put the phone down." You much. couldn't make it up, could you? That's, that's, you couldn't make it up. Exactly. She went, well, you've got to come in and we'll have to assess your situation. That's what she just said to me. And put the phone down. I, I literally just put the phone down. God. Concern. Oh, that's the council for you. For Lorraine and Nick's welfare, Paul wants to make sure she understands what she needs to do next. It's a bit worrying that you seem to have fallen through the system. What I would like to see is that you get what you... That's a bike lock. Yeah, so that is a bike lock right there, too. A pair of handcuffs, a bike lock, a couple glasses of water, Diet Coke, two liter. What type of eventful nights? Ain't no curtains on the window. You need now. Yeah. Get you down the council office so that you can get the ball rolling. Because <coughs> we can't stay here. Yeah, I know. It's just sadly, a Sadly, that... all day. The tenant's vulnerability, or mental health issues in particular, should, in my view, be reflected in the way that the councils deal with their situation. So, in other words, if someone is clearly in need of help, the, the council should appoint a social worker who may be specialised in that field. I haven't slept in, like, three days. I haven't slept since Monday night, because I've been... or eaten, because I've been worried about all of this. Stop. Come on now. I'm just gonna press play at this point. 
you're all right. <laughs> we haven't been Sorry, I'm, I know you're not all right. Yeah. You're completely shot to pieces. I understand yeah. that bit. Because I'm his carer as well, so... All oh, right. Do you just... get paid for doing that? Yeah, I get weekly money on a Monday, but I get income support, but that's tomorrow, so that's why we've got nothing till tomorrow. Lorraine and Nick start to pack, but they have another problem. It's crazy now. They claim their letting agency has told them they must remove all their possessions on the day of the eviction. We need to sort all that stuff out in the washing basket as well. Yeah, I've emptied the machine. Right. That's cat. That's that stuff there, that black bag there in the kitchen. Right, that's going to smell. We need to take that with us. Yeah. It's got paperwork everywhere. I am stressed, but I'm just trying to hold it in because usually I end up throwing stuff and screaming and shouting, but that doesn't help me. That just gets me even more worked up. So if you've got to be out, you've got to be out. There's nothing you can do. Steve calls the agency to see if Nick and Lorraine can have more time to remove their possessions from the flat. There is no way that they're going to get this property empty today. They're under the impression they've got to be out lock, stock and barrel today. You know they've got mental disability between them. Yeah. OK, all right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pass that over. They're saying that... They could put all their stuff they want into one room. Yeah. It just takes the pressure off slightly. Yeah. If they're happy to do this, you say, well, we want that in that room, that in that room, whatever, and then you can come back, they can go around and tidy the rest of the house. Leaving the couple to pack, Paul and Steve decide to wait in the van until Nick's mum arrives. If ever people need a little bit of care and compassion, it's these kids here. It's theoretically, they should escape into. Okay, well, I didn't, I didn't peep the level of, you know what I'm saying, mental instability going on here. Now I peep it, so it's like, all right, council, what are you doing? To cancel property. Two and a half hours after the agents repossessed the property, Nick's mum Kelly arrives. Into one corner. Yeah, we need to get the stuff you need at the moment. Yeah, they, they, they ain't gonna wait forever. Where's his medication? He's packed that in the bag in there. Like, he needs a coat and everything. You need a coat. I think it's fair that we waited till the mother came over because she's now taking charge of them, isn't she? Yeah. Facts. It's a nice couch. The eviction is complete. Lorraine and Nick are now homeless and face an uncertain future. They must hope that the council will find them some emergency accommodation for the night. It's gonna be a tough one. They might. Recap, two payments totaling 1,530 were made towards the takeaway debt. When the agents returned to collect the balance, the business had been legally transferred to a best fit SS LTD and they <laughs> got up out of there, didn't they? <laughs> James Elgar failed to make a payment towards the 3000 We knew that. <laughs> the agents reattended the two occupants. Uh, we attended on two occasions, but could not make contact with him. The case is now closed. That's just giving it, just wait it out is what we're saying. They ain't tell us if they, if the, if the couple got housing for the night or nothing. That's tough. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.